In this video, I will show you how to evaluate the six trigonometric functions given different kinds of information. I'm talking about tangent, sine, cosine, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. But first, uh, we need to cover a little background information. Back in the day, in geometry, when you first learned about tangent, sine, and cosine, they would just give you a right triangle floating in space. Okay, and they would say, all right, if you have an angle, then one of these legs will be the opposite leg, and the other leg is the adjacent leg, and then you have a hypotenuse, and then the way we defined um, sine, cosine, and tangent is we would say sine of angle theta was opposite over hypotenuse and cosine of angle theta was adjacent leg over the hypotenuse and tangent of theta was the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Alright, that's how you learned it back in the day. But um, these days, in, in upper level math classes, um, we don't typically just look at an angle uh, just floating in space. We think of angles as uh, being rotated around the origin. Okay, we think of an angle as having an initial side and a terminal side and we think of it as a rotation. So imagine the same scenario, but here we have the initial side of some angle, and here we have the terminal side of an angle. Okay, now somewhere along the terminal side of this angle, there's a point. All right, so focus on this point right here. This is the point x comma y. Okay, now where's the triangle? All right, we had a triangle before. We could do tangent sine and cosine, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. We need a triangle. You want a triangle? Here's your triangle. Take your point and drop a line segment straight down to the x-axis. That's going to form this right triangle. In fact, let's go ahead and draw that triangle now. Okay, now, let's label the sides of this triangle, but uh, we're not going to talk in terms of opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. We're going to talk it in terms of x and y, and well, I'll think of something for the hypotenuse. So first of all, this horizontal leg down here. I'm hoping you can see that the length of this side of the triangle is just going to be x. The, uh, the point uh, the x-coordinate tells you how far it is to the right, so that makes this length x. Similarly, this vertical part of the triangle is going to be y. The y-coordinate tells you how high up you are, and that height is this side of the triangle. Now, I'm going to introduce another letter for this hypotenuse. I'm going to uh, use the letter r. It stands for radius because as we're doing these rotations, I am really picturing... Uh, a circle. Okay, I'm, I'm picturing a circle that's rotating, so I'm thinking of this as the radius of a circle. So that, that's why I'm calling it R. Alright, anyways, and uh, here's, here's theta right here. So in terms of x, y, and r, the sine of angle theta all right, so we're not going to talk about opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse anymore. All right, we're going to use the x and the y and the r. So the sine is going to be y over r. Okay, and I'm, I'm sure you can see that's the same thing as opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, from now on, we're going to think of that as x over r which in this case would be the same as adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is going to be y over x. The same thing as opposite over adjacent. Okay, 
Now, the reason why we're going to do it this way instead of just sticking with um, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse is because this is more flexible. We need to, uh, in higher level math classes, we need to be able to deal with angles that are bigger than uh, 180 degrees. Sometimes we'll have angles that are even bigger than 360 degrees. Okay, so opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse will not help us in that situation. So imagine that we have an angle that's in the second quadrant, for example. Okay, so again, here's the initial side of some angle. And uh, here's the terminal side of an angle. I'm going to put it over here in the, in the second quadrant. Okay, if I know a point that's on that terminal side, um, everything I just said still works, even way over here in the second quadrant. So um, at this point, I've got angle theta is like this, all right? It's this uh, obtuse angle, all right, angle theta. But that's okay, uh, because still, the coordinates of this point are still x and y. Um, if I create this triangle now over here, okay, um, and yeah, this is, still, this is still r. So this vertical distance is still going to be y. This horizontal distance is still going to be x. x is going to wind up being a negative number, uh, but that's okay. So I don't have to change anything. I can still, uh, by using x, y, and r, I can um, still use these same formulas even when I'm talking about an angle that's larger than 90 degrees. Now, these three trig functions are very closely related to the tangent sine and cosine with which you are already familiar. These are called the reciprocal trig functions because each of these are the reciprocal of sine, cosine, and tangent. So cosecant of angle theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. And cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent theta. So keep that in mind. So, um, I mean, that's the part you really need to memorize, that right there. So if you didn't already know that, like pause the video and practice that, memorize that. Uh, but that also means that cosecant theta, since sine is y over r, then cosecant uh, will be r over y. You know, it's the reciprocal of sine. Um, cosine Similarly, uh, the, since cosine is x over r, then secant will be r over x. Since tangent is y over x, then cotangent is going to be x over y. So you don't need to memorize that you know, secant is r over x necessarily. Just remember that it's the reciprocal of cosine, and then you'll know to turn, just turn it upside down. Okay, I, don't, I know that was a lot of background information, but that's what we needed to be able to um, do these problems. So, for problem number three, the point negative five comma two lies on the terminal side of an angle in standard position. Find the exact values of sine, theta, and secant theta. Okay, well, let's draw it. Okay, negative five comma two, so one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two. Okay, fine. So the here's the point negative five, five negative five comma two is floating around over here, and uh, it is on the terminal side of an angle. Okay, so here comes the terminal side of this angle, all right, passing through here. All right, and of course, the uh, 
initial side is always the positive x-axis. So we're talking about angle theta. So we're talking about this angle right here. OK. Now, we could make a triangle out of this if we wanted to. And uh, what we would have is um, we'd have the horizontal piece. That's the x value. This is negative 5. The vertical piece, that's the y value. That's going to be 2. Um, now, we have x, we have y, we need r, we need the, the radius, the hypotenuse of this uh, right triangle. So uh, we actually need to do the Pythagorean theorem real quick. So um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or um, 2 squared plus negative 5 squared is going to equal that r squared. So uh, what do we have here? This is going to be 4 plus 25 is equal to r squared. So 29 is equal to r squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we see that r is equal to the square root of 29. So I'll just put that in the picture, square root of 29. OK, so what is going to be sine theta? Well, we know that sine is um, y over r. So sine is going to be 2 over radical 29. Now we could rationalize the denominator, but I'm going to allow you just to leave it like this. OK? Um, yeah, so we were just using the fact that sine is simply y over r. So that's what I did. OK, now. What about secant? Well, remember that secant, I can switch to the black screen. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's going to be r over x. OK. Or, you know, you could just ask yourself, um, what is cosine going to be. If you know that cosine, uh, you're used to thinking of it as adjacent over hypotenuse. So you can still use that to help you remember that it's x over r. So um, it's just going to be the negative 5. Hey, a common mistake. Make sure you include that negative. All right, this is over here going to the left. It's, you know, x is negative 5, not positive 5. So anyway, it's x over r. So that's negative 5 over uh, radical 29. Um, so now the secant is going to be the reciprocal of cosine. So that's going to be radical 29 over negative 5. Now, I prefer to actually put that negative out in the front of the whole thing instead of putting it in the denominator or the numerator. I'm just going to call it negative radical 29 over 5. All right, that's it. That's how you do it. OK, number four. Suppose theta is an angle in standard position whose terminal side lies in quadrant 3. Uh, well, let's draw that so far. OK, we have an angle in standard position. So that means the initial side is over here. Uh, the terminal side is going to lie in quadrant 3. So that's going to be over here. OK, so fine. Angle theta is doing one of these. OK, this is quadrant 3. What of it? Uh, the cosecant of theta is? negative 5 over 3. Find the value of tangent. Well, remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of cosine. OK, uh, sorry, that's false. Cos cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So remember how the sine function um, is y over r. So that means the cosecant function, remember, is going to be r over y. OK, so 
we are told that cosecant is equal to um, negative 5 over 3. Now, notice I'm going to take this negative sign and, and purposefully put it in the denominator. Okay? I'm going to, as soon as they let me erase this, I'm going to think of it as 5 over negative 3. All right, my computer's running really slow today. I need to remind me not to try to erase anything else for the rest of this video. Okay, I'm going to think of this as 5 over negative 3. Because that way, I'm going to think of the y value as negative 3, and I'm going to think of the r value as 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our little diagram going. Imagine that this is our point um, x comma y. Okay, I could draw a triangle out of this, of course. And so far, we have a, an, an R value of 5 that we could put in the picture. Um, we have a Y value of negative 3. So that, that would be right here. All we need is the X value to complete the picture. So we're just going to have to do a little Pythagorean theorem, all right, to find this X value. Okay, um, we'll have to be really careful, um, and I'll make that clear in a second. So, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So I've got negative 3 squared um, plus x squared is equal to 5 squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this is going to be 9 plus x squared is equal to 25. Uh, if I go ahead and subtract 9 from both sides, that's going to give me uh, x squared is equal to 16. And that's going to give me that x is equal to 4. Okay, now look, so here's where you have to be very careful. Because uh, when you do the Pythagorean theorem, you're just finding lengths. It's not going to tell you whether it should be positive or, or negative. So I know the length of this uh, horizontal piece of the triangle is 4. But be, because it's to the left, it's actually negative 4. Okay, so actually the x value is negative 4. Okay, so anyway, now we can do tangent. Because, remember, tangent is y over x. You know, we used to think of it as uh, opposite over adjacent but now we think of it as y over x. Okay, and we have um, a y value of negative 3 and an x value of negative 4. So y over x um, would be negative 3. Okay, so this is my thought process. Tangent theta is y over x, so negative 3 over negative 4. But a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we'll just say 3 over 4. All right, number 5. Cosine of d is 8 over 17. Find the exact value of the other trigonometric functions for the acute angle d. All right, so uh, we are supposed to be picturing a right triangle, all right, because they mentioned acute angle. So that was our clue. So let me just draw ourselves a right triangle. OK. All right, so this will be acute angle D right here. Now, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So um, that means 8 would be the adjacent leg, and 17 is the hypotenuse. Now, um, we need to find y so we can build all of our six trig functions out of this. Um, so we could do the Pythagorean theorem, which would go like this. 8 squared plus y squared is equal to 17 squared. All right, and I could solve this. but is this one of my Pythagorean triples? All right, I have, I see 8, 15, 17. 
here's 8, here's 17. So I know that this other side must be 15. So basically, this is going to come up over and over again. So it's worth it to memorize these, um, these four triples. Uh, but hey, you know what? Worst case scenario, if you don't memorize those, you can always just uh, solve out the Pythagorean theorem. But for now, I'm going to trust that you could solve the Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just going to use my triples. So this is a, a 15. Okay, so um, now what do I need to do? Well, let's do a tangent sine and cosine. So I know that um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 15 over 17. Um, cosine is given. You know, I, you know, so you know, I'll I'll put it here. So cosine, they left a gap here because it's already known. All right, cosine is eight over seventeen. All right, but I like to have it here so I can match up with my other things. And uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's fifteen over eight. Okay, and now these, they were kind enough to <laughs> line them up for us. Um, don't count on that in the future. Uh, these really could have been written in any order, but uh, I see that they were kind enough to line up the ones that are reciprocals right across from each other. So um, this is just going to be 17 over 15 and 17 over 8. And 8 over 15. And that's it. All right, now number six. Find the exact value, no decimals, of each trigonometric expression. If undefined, write undefined. OK. Um, so I'm really going to be using the unit circle uh, to do this. Now, before we get started, there are three key facts that you must memorize and everything else kind of flows from these three facts but you have to have these memorized um, and here they are you have to memorize what is um, the sine of pi over 4 which by the way this is the same thing as 45 degrees um, you have to memorize this um, uh, the sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2 um, or sometimes you'll see me write this as 1 over radical 2. Uh, but today I'll, I'll use radical 2 over 2. Okay, that's one of the three facts. Um, the next fact that you must memorize is uh, what's the sine of pi over 6? All right, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. This is the same thing as 30 degrees. Okay, you have to memorize that. And the final fact that you have to memorize is the cosine of pi over 6. All right, the cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. So, just flat out, you have to memorize these three facts. There's no two ways uh, around it. Now, if you know these three facts, then there are a bunch of other things that just flow very easily from this. Um, let's come back to the pi over 4 situation. Cosine of pi over 4 is the same thing as a sine. That's why we don't have to really memorize it as its own fact. If somewhere in your brain you just know that um, cosine and sine are the same, then that will give you a radical 2 over 2. Um, now, the other special angle, other than pi over 4 and pi over 6, we have to deal with pi over 3, which is the same thing as 60 degrees. So we need to be able to talk about what is the sine of pi over 3, and what is the cosine of pi over 3. But if you know these two, you can easily know these two because um, they are simply reversed. 
Okay, that's all there is to it. Um, so the sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. And the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Okay, so again, if you know these three yellow facts, then you can very quickly get the green ones. Um, but there's more. There's also tangent, and for some reason I feel like changing colors for tangent. Um, we need to know what's the tangent of pi over 4 and what's the tangent of pi over 6 and what is the tangent of pi over 3. We need to know the tangent. We don't need to memorize tangent as its own separate fact because um, we know that tangent is sine over cosine, so it's just this over this. Now, um, the denominators will cancel. Well, you know what? For this one, it doesn't matter. If you divide anything by itself, you know that's going to be 1. So that's, that's going to be 1. Now, if I do sine over cosine, they both have a denominator of 2. Those cancel out. So you wind up having 1 over radical 3, if you just look at the numerators here. Okay, which, by the way, is the same thing as radical 3 over 3. Um, so these are interchangeable. Um, now over here, again, tangent is just sine over cosine. So it's just this over this. The denominators, again, cancel out. So looking at the numerators, we have radical 3 over 1, which is just radical 3. So again, if you just memorize these three yellow facts, then all the rest of this, the pink and the green, flow uh, quite naturally from that. Okay, so I'm always assuming that you could generate this chart in about a minute um, and then go on with the test or the assignment. All right, let's get back to it. Now, I'm looking at the denominator here. They say uh, 4 pi over 3. So what jumps out at me is pi over 3. That tells me that I'm dealing with a reference angle of pi over 3. It's one of my special angles. So what you should do is draw yourself a sketch showing reference angles of pi over 3. Okay, so here's pi. And if I take pi and I divide it up into three pieces, okay, focusing on the top semicircle, uh, can you see I've just divided it up into three pieces? That means each one of these is a third of pi, or each one of these is pi over three. Okay, so when I look at this and it says four pi over three, um, where is that on this image? Well, this is 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3 is right here. Okay, so this is the position that is 4 pi over 3. All right, so that's helpful because it, it lets me know what quadrant I'm in, and that's going to help me with signs. Now, um, you know what? I'll stay with the pink. Tangent, um, if you take any trig function and you want to know what the value is, go ahead and look at the same function of the reference angle. So tangent of 4 pi over 3 is going to be the same thing as the tangent of just pi over 3, except for one thing. Um, it might be positive or it might be negative. That's the only thing we have to worry about. So. Um, let's think about it. First of all, what is the tangent of pi over 3? Well, we just talked about that, didn't we? Um, the tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. It's right there. Okay, so that would give me radical 3. So that means my final answer is going to be either radical 3 um, or it could be negative radical 3. That's the only question. Should I put a negative sign on it? And my picture here that I drew is what will tell you that. Um, you know what? Let me just throw the y-axis in here. So, and here's my x-axis. Just to make it really obvious that this uh, is in the third quadrant over here. Um, so tangent is positive in this quadrant. Okay? Um, 
these are the two places where tangent is positive. And, and look, I have memorized that fact, but part of where it comes from is, um, you know how tangent is a sine over cosine? All right, tangent is sine over cosine. All right, so think about sine and cosine. Uh, let me go green with this. Okay, I'm going to uh, make coordinates, and uh, it'll be cosine, comma, sine. In this quadrant, x values are positive, that's your cosine, and y values are positive, that's your sine. Okay, so if you do sine over cosine, that would be positive divided by a positive, so that's going to give you a positive answer. That's why tangent is positive in this quadrant. Okay, um, now over in this quadrant, cosine is negative. X values are negative because they're to the left. Y values are positive. Now, if you do sine over cosine, um, then that would be positive over negative. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. That's why tangent is negative here. Now in this quadrant, the x values are negative because it's to the left. The y values are negative because of it's down. Um, so sine over cosine, you'd have a negative divided by a negative. A negative over a negative is a positive. That's why tangent is positive in this quadrant. And in this quadrant, um, x values are positive and y values are, are negative because it's to the right and it's down. Um, so that's why tangent, if, if I do um, sine over cosine, that's negative divided by positive, that's going to be a negative. Uh, whoops, I just meant to circle it. All right, so that's why, uh, that's where I learned where tangent is going to be positive and where it's negative. But um, I don't have to go through that thought process every time because I went ahead and just memorized it. Okay tangent is positive in the first and third quadrant and it's negative in the second and fourth quadrant. So anyway, this is in the uh, third quadrant so I know it's going to be positive so that's why I know that my final answer is going to be this right here. Radical 3. Okay, let's do one more and I know this has been a long video but um, I wanted to just get to the end of this practice quiz. So um, again, pi over 4, I see the uh, pi over 4 is going to be my reference angle. So let's go ahead and do our picture. And I'm going to draw a bunch of pi over 4s. So here's pi. And so pi over 4, that means I need to divide this into four pieces. So, so far, I've divided up into two pieces. So I'm going to split each of those in half. Okay, so looking at the top semicircle, see how I have four pieces? That means each one of these positions is pi over four every time I move. Um, so if I say three pi over four, well, this is one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four is right here. This is the three pi over four terminal side. Now, um, talking about um, if I want to find the trig function value, I like to focus on the reference angle, which is pi over 4. So cosecant of 3 pi over 4 is the same thing as cosecant of pi over 4, except maybe it's negative. It, maybe it's positive, maybe it's negative. I don't Right now, I don't know if this should be a, if this should stay positive or it should be negative. I'll have to figure that out in in a moment. Um, but look, cosecant, I'm not a hundred percent comfortable with. What I'm more comfortable with is the fact that um, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Excuse me, I'm gonna go back to the sine function and work from there. Okay, so let's actually first figure out what is the sine of pi over 4. 
And that's one of those facts, one of those three key facts that you are supposed to just flat out memorize. Sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Okay, which by the way sometimes is written as 1 over radical 2. Um, but radical 2 over 2, I'm going to go with this time. Okay, so sine of pi over 4 is, hold on, my pen's not working. Um, sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Now, in this quadrant, should it stay positive or should I throw a negative on there? Um, well, sine is positive in this quadrant because sine is a, is a y value on the unit circle and y values um, are positive up here. So it's going to just be positive radical 2 over 2. So what about um, cosecant? Well, cosecant is just the reciprocal of this. So um, if sine is radical 2 over 2, then cosecant should be the reciprocal of this, um, which will be 2 over radical 2. OK? OK, now I feel silly for not doing it the other way, um, because I definitely don't want to leave this like this. Remember when I told you um, that radical 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1 over radical 2. And I decided to go with radical 2 over 2. Um, that was a bad choice. Um, because it would really be better if I go ahead and used the other version. Sorry for the confusion. Um, if I go ahead and use 1 over radical 2, then this is going to work out much better. When I do the reciprocal, then I'm just going to get radical 2 and that's much better than what I had before. They're equivalent, but this is a, a simpler way to put it. Okay, and um, it is positive. We uh, Based on the quadrant, sine is positive, so therefore cosecant, which is just a reciprocal, is also positive. Okay, so that's it. So the final answer is simply radical 2. Okay, um, but just be advised, uh, in this particular problem, it turned out to be um, in this quadrant. But um, imagine that instead it had turned out to be in this quadrant where I just drew this green line. Um, what if it had been, instead of 3 pi over 4, what if it had been 5 pi over 4? Then it would have been here. All right, now in that case, the sine function would be negative down here because y values are negative. So then this would have been negative, and then, then that would have made this negative. And then so the answer would have been negative. So that's not what happened, but I want you to be ready for that because it could easily happen that way. All right, this is a long video. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you on the next video.